Again, we're using a modulating. Two bolts will close, so it's a normally closed motor. And now we lose the control signal again. At 50% open, what's going to happen? Closed. Exactly. It's going to go closed. Just like on the spring return model, right now we're not talking power. So again, it's seeing it as a zero or two volt signal. It's going to go to its closed position. Same actuator again, but now we've lost power. Now what's going to happen? A number of you said it's going to remain in its current position because it's a non-spring actuator, which are also sometimes referred to as fail in place. Anybody tell me why you would choose an electronic fail safe actuator over a spring return actuator? That's not so much cost for the, between these two. We'll talk about cost in a few minutes about some others though. Safety application. It, certainly the application would be one thing. Um, if you need higher torque, you might want to mark <laughs> this one down, Brian, since we yeah. go up to 270 inch pounds now. But if you need a higher torque, more than 270 inch pounds, we have electronic fail safe that goes to 360 uh, without having to double up. Now our 270 inch pound, you can double those up to get extra torque as well if you want to stay with the mechanical spring. Quick actuation. With the electronic fail safe, you can, you can program those for quicker uh, actuation than you can with the spring. Or as I mentioned earlier, linear control. If you need fail safe with the linear actuator, uh, which I was saying was good for pneumatic retrofits, like I said earlier, we don't have a spring return model for that, but we do have the electronic fail safe. So those are a few of the uh, applications where electronic fail safe would be chosen over a spring return. So speaking of electronic fail safe, um, we have one here, GKB24-SR, uh, electronic failsafe. Uh, we didn't really talk about this yet, but with the electronic failsafe, I don't know if you can see the little dial there, it's, it's covered by a little uh, piece of plastic that you just lift up, move to the side. Electronic failsafe, you don't have to fail full open or full close because it's getting power from capacitors upon a power failure, you can fail to some mid position. So one thing that I've told a number of people that, that's nice about this is that, um, for example, on a steam valve, if you're using it on a valve, and you want it to, uh, to maintain a little bit of steam flow through your coil, you can fail it so you're at 10 or 20% open on that steam valve still. Similar scenario with, with a damper. If you want to maintain a minimum outdoor air, you can fail it so it's the damper is 10 or 20 percent open. Uh, but that's one nice feature with the, uh, the electronic fail safe that you don't have with a spring return. Uh, you know, spring return you could do something similar by putting in a hard end stop, um, but it's nice just through the electronics. The electronic fail safe. So with this setup here. What's going to happen when we lose the control signal when the actuator is at 50%? Oh, close. Yep. Just like the spring return, non spring, we're losing control signal. It's going to go to its closed position. Now, if we have the same actuator, what's going to happen? And we lose power, what's going to happen? go to the fail position of 40%. As I was mentioning, the, the EF, our 270 inch pound, we can uh, mount multiple actuators on one shaft. Uh, this is 
one way of wiring. It's not our preferred method. Some people will uh, uh, wire directly to the control signal. So the first actuator in the chain fails. The others will not respond to the control signal. Uh, what we're showing here is, so the five wire is your feedback wire, wiring into your control wire. Then again, five to control like that. In this method here, wiring all the actuators to the control signal. If one fails, the others aren't going to fail. See the uh, feedback wire is not controlling the other actuator. This is called parallel wiring. Now this is master slave wiring. And actually this this is the preferred method if they are both on the same shaft. That other was if they're on uh, multiple shafts. This, if you're on the same shaft, you want to do the master slave wiring where you do want to control the other actuators from that feedback. And the reason being you want to keep them in sync. So by taking this feedback wire to this actuator, then it's going to control at the same uh, rate as the first actuator. This is showing how many actuators you can mount in the dual configuration. So the GK, our uh, largest electronic fail-safe, you mount two of those. You mount up to three of the EF, the largest spring return. And then you can mount three of the AF <coughs> MFG models as well. But when we're talking about two position AI, you can only mount two. And then once you get down to the NF, there's really no reason to tandem mount. Because the NF is 90 inch pounds, an AF is 180. So just put an AF on instead of two inches. Question? Well, if you already have a 90 in there, you're adding to that. I mean, it's just better off again just to replace it with the 180. Yeah, I would. Rather than try to match up a, a new actuator and an old actuator, you're better off just getting the new higher torque actuator. Yeah. So piggyback mounting, um, you do the daisy chain for the 2 to 10 volt models. Do parallel wiring for the on-off, loading. Um, you can do that for SR as well and the MFT models. <coughs> Piggyback mounting is described as two or more actuators on two or more shafts. So more uh, piggyback. The last one, first one was dual. I don't know what's piggyback mounting. More piggyback back mounting. Parallel and then master slave. We're going to want a master slave in it. The rest can be uh, wired up in parallel. Now this is, this is the way we want to, would want to wire them if two or more of the actuators are mounted on the same shaft rather than on multiple shafts. And this is a case where, uh, let's see, we have uh, basically a butterfly valve set up, a three-way butterfly valve, where we have a couple different actuators linked together, but controlling two different shafts. And here, master slave again, MFT models, and parallel wire on-off floating point models. Any questions? What we went through there, the normally open, or the normal position, fail position, or the uh, multiple uh, wiring of actuators. Where is that at in the book, the catalog? Uh, 